is it? Lovely. Look at this traffic. It's worse than green lanes on a Monday morning. This is Swansea, South Wales. How can I be this lost already? I wonder what this video is going to look like. Time to climb another hill, I think. Must have been over five minutes since the last one. Great, as you imagine. I'm an old man commander. There used to be toilets there with glue sniffers in. That was where the Addis factory was. Swansea helped win the Battle of Trafalgar. Is that not a good fact or what? As Lenny said, stay green. Stay green. Don't forget, Wales. Keep going. Pretty quick stop here. My plan for today is to try and do lots of little stops because there's loads and loads to see. We're in an area called Cockett and I've just ridden up this hill, <laughs> hence the breathing. And Cockett is very significant to me. Spent a lot of my youth growing up around this area. And on that road there lives my auntie, lived and maybe lives my first band member, my first guitarist. And just there behind that van lived my first drummer. So that tells you a little bit about the significance of this area and my musical background. And just up the road, just up the road up there, is a very, very significant building. Let's pop in there, have a quick look at that, and then move on. Right, we are fast approaching the site of my first ever gig, if it still exists. Here it is. Well, look at this. Cockett Community Centre. Good God. All right, so what's the significance here? When I was 16 years old, thereabouts, I mentioned the guitarist down the road earlier on. He's, he just started playing. He was obsessed with all things Ozzy Osbourne. He's a great guy. True rock and roll right to the bottom of his heart. And the drummer on the corner from him, he was just starting to learn drums. And they were practicing in here, but they didn't have a bass player. They didn't have a singer either. They didn't have a bass player. And I was hanging out with my group of friends in this area. And I thought that's the job for me. I'll be the bass player. So into town I went, into Swansea with my, my mother and I bought the cheapest bass I could find. It was 85 quid, didn't have a name. The action was about two inches from the neck, I think. A 30 watt amp and we formed a band in here. And that was it, that was the beginning of it. I practiced over and over till I had blisters on top of my blisters, on top of my blisters. Like day in, day out, every single day. And we had such a group of like friends, 30 odd friends or so, and every now and again, we feel confident and stick on a gig on a Saturday night. It was just like a piss up for them, you know, to drink the cider and stuff. But great times. This is where it all started. I don't know how many years later, I'm still playing. Play instruments. It's great. My little 30 watt amp, amp that I had, my little JHS, I think it was, 30 watt amp. I remember I absolutely couldn't wait to crank up the volume on it. So I brought it down, turned up the volume, and everything distorted on the bass. It sounded horrendous. I could not believe how bad it was. <laughs> After that, I went down to see a chap called, a famous local musician called Barry Hammett. He was an amazing guy. And um, he sold me his Fender Basement 200 watt combo. And we're getting a bit closer now. I think I, I managed with that for a few years. That was all right. And that church you can see right there while we're at it, with another band a little bit later on, we also rehearsed in there. There's a church hall in there. We could get the key from the, the vicar guy down the road. And we also rehearsed in that as well. Anyway, that's enough of the beginnings. As I said, we've got loads to get through. I'm going to hit the road, hit the traffic, because it is super busy around here. Kids are going to school, people are going to work. I've made an early start because I've got so much to get in. So I'm going to get out there, get back on the road, and head north, perhaps. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Look at this traffic. It's worse than green lanes on a Monday morning. Blimey. This might be Blind and Ice, Port Mead. I'm not actually sure, but we're approaching a place called Penland. Pen being top, land being something else, probably hill. I don't know what, actually. Please correct me, Welsh speakers. Up the hill. Another hill. Plenty of them. So these houses that you see around me here now, to my left and right, places like these. See these ones slightly different colour. These ones over this side. All of these are huge estates of these all over the place, all around here. 
and they were all council housing. So they were owned by the council, you paid a, a lowest rent to get you on the housing ladder, you know, get you accommodation. But at some point, was it to do with Thatcher's time? Quite possibly. Uh, they allowed people to buy their own council houses if they wanted to. So they could, for a small amount of money, they could buy a council house for something, I don't know, crazy, like £8,000 or something, I don't know. So there were people who, were, who would buy these houses, plenty of them. A friend of mine did, actually. Another guitarist, they bought one. Uh, and that means, basically, you're then free from the council and you can do whatever you want to the house. This is actually pretty special. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking we're in uh, somewhere in deepest, darkest Russia, <laughs> USSR. We're not. This is Swansea, South Wales. Lovely. Man. <laughs> it's misty, isn't it? Huh? Can't see anything. It's misty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a Pentland Social Club. Still there. Obviously it's not open now. It's only eight o'clock. It'll be open at half past. Well, this used to be the entrance to my secondary school from about 11 years on. Comprehensive school, Pentland Comprehensive. Nothing fancy. And it's a real shame we can't see it. But in the Acton episode, I pointed out a block of flats. I said they looked a bit like my old school. This is the school I was talking about. When I used to go there 50 something years ago, no, not that long. When I used to go there, this school looked very much like that block of flats in the first Acton episode. Yeah, it was a wild and yeah, somewhat of a rough school. But it produced the likes of Richard Moriarty, Paul Moriarty, uh, Mervyn Davis. Those, if you're very old, are very famous Welsh rugby players. <laughs> if you're not, you can look them up. So this is one of the uh, council estates, or as it was then, behind the school. And yeah, it was a classic sort of Penland council estate. Bit rough, you know, didn't want to linger really particularly. So we'll have a quick scan around here if you can see any of it. Quick look around, and then we move on. Right, you have a look at this. All right. So that's not good. Nonce. And the P word, whiny. The sort of things you can find around here. <laughs> so wacky races. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of musical references in this one today of different places and, you know, it's a big part of my life. Sidetracked, hold on. Oh, down the other end as well. Said nonce on there as well. Jesus, am I lost? How can I be this lost already? This fog's not helping. Oh, what's down here now? Oh, here we go. I know where I am, I think. Yep. There's the shops. Where Michael Downing got beaten up. Right, okay, let's go down here. Right, we're back on heel, Garossid. So there's something at the bottom here I want to show you quickly. So this place behind me was a stonemason's. And all the front here used to be full of headstones being made, you know, gravestones. That little room there, into that door, and all down that end and, and behind here. That was a recording studio and rehearsal room. So just a quick stop to show another one of our rehearsal places. I can't remember how we even found it. It was late down the line, but we used to rehearse in there anyway, with one of the bands, Get Down Shep, Sour Mash or something. Rehearsing in the stonemasons, hence the rock. Time to climb another hill, I think. Must have been all of five minutes since the last one. <laughs> Jesus, road's a bit rough. They resurface in it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over this mist. This is crazy, there's a big block of flats here. It's been here forever. We used to know somebody who lived on the top floor, we used to love going up there and have a look at their view. But <laughs> you can barely see the top of it today. It's insane. 
Try and imagine an infant school there, because you can't see bugger all at the moment. I wonder what this video is going to look like. Grey, I should imagine. Although it's quite fitting because I always say that the weather in Wales is damp, wet to say the least. Yeah, it's living up to expectations. Why have I stopped here? Can you make out a building behind there? Let's go and have a look at that. All right, my glasses are off. It's getting ridiculous. We're getting totally missed it up. <coughs> so, I can't believe it. You can't even see it. All these people are going in here into work, all these cars. This building we have... <laughs> okay, imagine a great big square Lego block. You can just see the outline there, up there and down there. There's some more, smaller buildings. That there is what we call the DVLC, then later changed to the, the DVLA. That's right, DVLA, I got it the right way around, giving my age away. But I can remember when this was all waste ground, you know, as the old folks say. But I can. We used to play on this, it was just bumps and dirt and stuff. But pretty handy when you wanted to post your tax disc or something when you lived just up the road. There you go. Right, true nostalgia. This is where I grew up, this is the area. These bungalows, this sort of thing. It's where I spent the first 20 odd years of my life and my parents spent 50 years. Because I want to get to somewhere else. This was my street. <laughs> yep, it's just kind of weird. As you would expect, very emotional. Anyway. Oh, good God, what's going on? Don't tell me they've let it go to ruin. And the drop off is still there, exactly the same. Yep, remember these stones? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. This way. Oh, <laughs> so weird, I remember ind individual stones. I also remember a friend of mine had a cousin who used to like riding motorbikes and he would razz up and down here on his motorbike a lot. And I used to think, yeah, hey, one day I'll get a motorbike. And I did. But I had number plates and rode it on the road and stuff. This guy was like, it may not have been his motorbikes, I don't know. Thank you for gravel tires. Right, so this is Morriston Park, where I spent most of my youth. Did that just go wild? It's more like a heath. We try and visit a park in an area, so this is going to be our featured park on this occasion because this is the park I used to know so well when I was a kid. This wasn't it didn't have this sort of tufts of grass like this. This was well maintained. It's completely different. This used to be like a little mini pitch and putt course at one point. And there used to be a cricket pavilion and a cricket pitch. That's gone as well. I think they've left it go wild on purpose, maybe. Right, let's just roll down the hill here and have a little look at something and see if there's anything left of it. <laughs> oh, all right. I see something. I gotta try this, haven't I? <laughs> Just like Tottenham revisited. Okay. Right. The tree's a bit rough. Oh, that bird looks a bit rough. <laughs> Okay, this is a bit more BMX oriented than I was hoping. Oh, well, it is a BMX track. Actually. I'm an old man commander. I think I better get off before something goes horribly wrong. Yeah, let's get out. That was fun, at least for me. The reason I'm doing that is that this, when we were in Kent Kentish Town. Do you remember the Lido that was there? Well, this used to be a Lido it's called Morriston Baths. Do you remember Morriston Baths? You don't? How long have you been here? Uh, I work in Morriston, so I only started working here about three years ago. Oh, okay. 
I was born here just up the road and I'm a kid when I was a kid this was a swimming pool like a really? a bath yeah oh, a bit like a Lido an outdoor swimming oh, pool yeah. so a little entrance here somewhere it looks really small to be a space for it now but there was a little entrance in the way in obviously and walls around it and an open air swimming pool inside oh. yeah and it was really popular you know when we were young and then it got left and left and left <laughs> and it, until it became a ruin you know and stuff yeah. like that but yeah look up some pictures of it at some point and you can see what it was like, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So. I never see this being used. <laughs> well, you just regularly. did. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I caught the tail end of it using it, but that's the only time. Yeah, yeah. So, well, um, I walked the dog before going into work, so I'm here quite a lot. Yeah. Well, now you can imagine this big square building, like a small Lido, like they used yeah. to have years ago, you know? They used to call it the Lido, actually. Yeah. Hi, right, there we are. This was a nice little part. There used to be toilets there. With glue sniffers in. No glue sniffers today. And that's it for part two. Come back next week when we do a bit more exploring, there's a bit more history, and hopefully the weather's a bit better. <laughs>